Hey guys, Byron here at day two of Chargers training camp practice uh, on behalf of Roster Watch Nation and I'll tell you guys what stood out to me. I think first and foremost, the Chargers have a really, really good roster and I'd say a solid chance at winning this division, making the playoffs. I think it's really noticeable the bodies they've added on the defensive side of the ball. I think we're going to see pretty significant improvement uh, from the Chargers defense and of course the coaches are pretty fired up. They think they've improved the few holes that existed in the offensive line last year. I mean, they got a lot of good players along that offensive line now. They're very excited about the rookie at guard. Uh, I think it was the number 17 pick out of Boston College of round one back in April's NFL draft is Zion Johnson. He's getting a lot of buzz around here and certainly his teammates, um, especially the other linemen have spoke very, very highly about him and his uh, adjustment uh, as a rookie to the NFL. So certainly very promising. You know, in terms of fantasy, you know, what stands out to me is, you know, we all know Justin Herbert is an absolute freak at this point. He's a top shelf quarterback in the league. And, um, you know, I think most everything points back to Justin Herbert. He's got a lot of weapons. They're really spreading the ball around. I think in the end that is going to amount to another really nice season for Herbert. He's a guy I'll definitely want on some of my fantasy teams. But um, if we kind of go, you know, looking at the uh, big names on the roster, it still does appear that Keenan Allen is – going to lead this team in targets he is still the preferred option in the passing game it appears with Herbert uh, he gets a lot of looks out here and he still looks like Keenan Allen that guy's just slick I was really getting open at will still today and um, I think we would expect another great season from Keenan Allen this year uh, Mike Williams you know, we've a player we've monitored closely over the years. Definitely has blossomed as a more versatile receiver than maybe we would have expected when he was coming out of Clemson as that outside guy. But, you know, really the player that stood out to me in terms of fantasy relevance, kind of a maybe somebody new to put on our radar, a second year wide receiver, Josh Palmer, looks to solidify himself as the wide receiver three out here. Very slick route runner, uh, catching the ball very well. Uh, I think he's really grown in uh, to the NFL here heading into year two seems to be very mature and has a really solid handle on everything Herbert seems to trust him he said he spent a lot of time working out with Keenan Allen in the summer and I think that certainly showed up in uh, the quality of his routes today and you know Alex asked me an interesting question uh, on the Sirius XM show last night he said well where are all these targets going to come from you know how is Palmer going to crack uh, any kind of fantasy relevance with so many targets going to Mike Williams and to Keenan Allen last year. And I guess my thought is it doesn't look like Keenan Allen's target share is going anywhere. I think he is locked and loaded as the target leader of this team. But it does make me wonder after two days of practice if we might see Josh Palmer eat into Mike Williams' target share, at least to some extent. I think that's where the targets are going to come from. Um, I don't feel like Mike Williams was as, as prominent in these two practices this year as he was uh, last year before the emergence of Palmer. So, you know, look, is Palmer going to be a guy that you can play on a weekly basis in fantasy? No. But does he look like a guy that should be drafted as a wide receiver four, wide receiver five, that can be stashed on your bench and played in a pinch under, you know, the proper circumstances? Uh, I absolutely think so. And then in terms of tight ends, I don't think there's anybody you're really going to want to key in on there or start, I think, from – football perspective they have a nice tight end group Trey McKitty has really been pretty much absent in practice the last two days it was mostly um mostly Gerald Everett and Donald Parham going back and forth in the rotation so it's going to be hard to pinpoint um, but certainly from a real football perspective Herbert has um, quality of weapons across the passing game and then when we look at the running back situation I know everybody's wondering who is going to be that guy behind Austin Eckler is there a guy that can become a 2A or a 1B and I think the truth is right now it just doesn't appear so I mean Austin Eckler looks awesome he's clearly the lead guy um, right now through two days of camp with pads on uh, here in early August Josh Kelly is still running as the number two back on the roster but look that's what we saw last year at camp this time and that didn't really materialize over the course of the season I think that could be a little bit of veteran preference um, and, you know, behind him, it's Roundtree and Spiller. I'd say Roundtree is definitely running ahead of Spiller, you know, at least by a little bit at this point. Uh, but Spiller looked really good. 
especially in the passing game. He caught the ball very, very well. And I think, you know, with his situation, talent, draft capital is going to win out. And I would expect that we can project him to, you know, at least climb the rotation a little bit. But if we're going to be honest, it does look like the Chargers running back room behind Austin Eckler is going to be a committee this season. I'm not sure there's anybody that you're really going to be able to rely on other than Austin Eckler.